Well, here we are in the shade house. Uh, it's cold. We're in the beginning of a cold snap. And this morning I walked out thinking that my cool weather clothing was enough. I was wrong. I went back into the house to get this. This is my emergency cold weather gear. It's big, it's ugly, and it is really appreciated on cold mornings. Uh, it was in uh, the mid 40s, uh, which I know that doesn't mean much to a lot of people in other areas of the country, but it means cold. Uh, I've been in Florida for too long, and so it definitely is chilly. Uh, in a few hours, it will warm up because it's a nice clear day and the sun does help a lot. But I was out at the crack of dawn and wandering around looking at the plants and I thought it's probably something that you might be interested in. So let's take a look. There are some changes. Uh, now, this is one of the big changes and probably can't see it too well, but fortunately I took a picture of this. Uh, this uh, bench for one gallon plants was really sagging before, and what I did was put pipes to support it. So it's much better now. So these are just mostly one gallon mango plants that I've uh, grafted. There are some other types of plants down there. Uh, this is also a big change. Uh, I've never gotten this many mango trees uh, at one time, but we've really had a hard time keeping a lot of the varieties in stock. And so I bought a crazy amount of mango trees and I'm growing them out so that when the demand really starts getting strong for mango trees, I'll have decent ones. I was afraid that I wouldn't have all the varieties or what I could get in another five or six months would be really small. So anyway, that's in progress also. I think we better go around. This is sort of an obstacle course. We've done a lot of cleaning up in the shade house. So hopefully we'll have a lot of room for other plants besides these. Also, we've just recently solved a, a irrigation problem. Uh, the spray heads on this side were not doing too well and now they're doing great. But this is one thing I wanted to show you. I've, I've modified the design a little bit of the concrete blocks, but this is going to be another one of these uh, benches for the one gallon plants. So got to get some pipes cut. They'll be here and those will be the main support. And then we'll be able to put stuff on top of, you know, put a surface on top of the pipes and then start loading up the, the one gallon plants. Uh, right now, unfortunately, it's not a good time to graft. Uh, when the temperatures get cold into the 40s, it just decreases the chances that mangoes anyway will will be successful, mango grafts. So working on other things, trying to get everything in, sh in shape, and then uh, when the weather warms up a little bit, it looks like maybe next week might be warm enough to graft. Uh, then we'll start grafting again. And and hopefully this will be all set and we can have a new area to, to put the one gallon plants. I like to put the one gallon plants up higher because I think that there's fewer weed seeds blowing around. Uh, I've really tried to decrease the amount of weeds in this area, but uh, still, uh, you know, the, the plants that are on the ground seem to, to just get a uh, lot of weeds. Secondly, if the plants do get weeds, it's a lot easier to be standing and picking out the weeds rather than uh, crouching down for it. So anyway, there's a little future uh, one gallon plant area. This is, this is very common. I, you know, I sort of have a half, um, like a sixth sense about it, but there's several areas that have big old roots uh, popping up. So you sort of have to you know, watch your step. And the reason for that is that the previous owners uh, really used this shade house 
uh, intensively. It was just full of plants. And then I think it was in 1992, the electricity to the pump was knocked out and they didn't repair it. And consequently, it was like survival of the fittest in here. It was really a jungle. Unfortunately, I didn't take any pictures at that time, but there were 30-foot um, trees growing through the, the top of the, the shade house. And of course, the roots that had gotten out of little three-gallon uh, pots had become massive. And so uh, there's every once in a while, there's these places that have you know bumps in them where the big roots had, had established below below the ground cloth. And this is, a, this is our little dilapidated thing. This is a sort of a using a bench that the previous owners had used, but it was sort of broken. There was, they used this waffle board over here for most of it, but then uh, because of getting crashed and broken over the years, it, a lot of that was broken. So I just used some, uh, this is actually a rotten uh, wood from a rotten uh, picnic table that I put in here as a support on the four by four. So then we got to use the whole length of this. Uh, this was also left by the previous owners. We had to redo the top. We used some stuff that was left over from uh, when some concrete work was done um, for a, a support there on top of the two by fours. But um, there's a bunch of one gallon plants, not just mangoes, but um, I really like miracle fruit. It's an attractive fruit, of, uh, well, an attractive plant, and the fruit is really interesting. And a lot of people use a lot of miracle fruit um, for health reasons. Um, so anyway, those are a lot of miracle fruit. And then we have some grafted mangoes also. And then this is like the undiscovered country. <laughs> this is the last part of the shade house. Uh, I tried to get rid of Noni, uh, I think that was about a year ago, maybe two, a little bit more than a year ago. It's such an attractive plant, but it just is hard to get rid of, and it really isn't a shade house plant. Uh, I'm really not sure how this this uh, escaped. It possibly uh, somebody put a, a one gal or a three gallon Noni in, and it just started growing, and it apparently sprouts out from its roots also. So whenever you're trying to to dig it up if there's some roots remaining then it sprouts out again uh, but uh, this is it's always interesting to me I mean you know I, I love the look of the plant uh, we do have noni fruit that we offer from time to time and it's um, you know it fruits and then grows and so we have all stages this one's ready to pick this one is almost ready to pick but then you can see the the more green fruit the smaller green and then right here is like the flower and just starting to form the fruit so I, you know very interesting it's useful in a lot of ways and it's known as a survival fruit in a lot of the uh, Pacific Islands that that it uh, sort of sprouts up in uh, you know it's not a flavor that a lot of people like but it's really good for you <laughs> Uh, so that's, uh, that's one of the, the things that we have to address in this last 20% of the shade house. Uh, the ground cloth is not in good shape either. And then this is an interesting thing. Carr brought uh, a Rolinia plant. Uh, I think it was a, a type of Rolinia. Uh, it's an Anona anyway. And uh, it... Um, it seems to do the same thing as noni does, is that wherever the roots go, a uh, little plant sprouts up. He's never gotten, the, gotten any fruit from it, but we have a lot of plants around. Uh, the thing that Hard said was really notable about this particular uh, variety of fruit uh, is the flowers. He never got the fruit, but he got a lot of flowers, and he said the, the aroma from the, the flowers was just amazing, uh, really, really pleasant. So Scott actually took one of these plants to his place because he thought that would be an interesting thing to have at his house too.
So anyway, we definitely need to do some work here, but the goal is to finish the first 80% of the shade house and then we will work on this last 20%. So I don't know, you know, my goal is before next mango season, this whole shade house will be up and running at full capacity.